pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The moment of silence, please. Okay, thank you. Oops. It goes up and down somewhere. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sit in the big boy chair. Yeah. You, can't, you can't reach. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is um, get a couple of public laws. The first one, number one, we public hearing on local law 2018 3 establish a term for clerks and deputy clerk. You have to read the whole thing. This yeah. thing? Yeah. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the Board of Trustees of the Village of Walton, Delaware County, New York at the Village Hall, 21 North Street, on the 4th day of September at 6 p.m. to hear public opinion on Local Law 2018-3 to establish the term for the appointed office of Village Clerk and Deputy Clerk. All interested parties and citizens will be heard who are, are for or against this addition. Need a motion to open up the hearing? So moved. Right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any public comment? I can read it just to let you guys know what it's all about. I think it's probably that's the best thing to do. This is a local law to establish the term for appointed offices of clerk and deputy clerk in the village. This local law is adopted pursuant to the municipal home rule law that grants local governments the authority to enact local laws regarding the qualifications of local officers and the provisions of public office law that grants the village the power to enact local law which may override the provisions of village law with regard to the government matters. The position of village clerk when vacant shall be filled by, by the appointment of the mayor subject to the approval of the Board of Trustees. The village clerk shall hold an office for an indefinite term and may be removed for a just cause upon recommendation of the mayor and by a majority vote of the Board of Trustees. The position of deputy clerk when vacant shall be filled by appointment of the mayor subject to the approval of the Board of Trustees. The village clerk shall, of uh, the deputy clerk, excuse me, shall hold the office for an indefinite term and may be removed for just cause upon recommendation of the mayor and by majority vote of the board of trustees. Number five, in any clause, sentence, paragraph, word, section of, of section or part of this local law shall be adjudicated by any court of competent jurisdiction to be unconstitutional, unconstitutional, illegal, or invalid. Such a judgment shall not affect, impair, or invalidate the remainder. Therefore, but it shall be confined in its operation of the clause, sentence, paragraph, work section, or part thereof directly involved in the controversy in which such judgment shall have been redeemed. This local law shall take effect upon filing in the office of the Secretary of State. I need to come out of it, right? Yeah, no, okay. no public comment. I need a motion to come out. Make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I need a, a motion to. Do you want to make a motion to approve this law? I'll make a motion to approve the new law. Is there a second? I will second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Okay. <coughs> Number two, public hearing, local law 218-4. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the Board of Trustees of the Village of Walton, Delaware County, New York, at the Village Hall, 21 North Street, on the fourth day of September, 2018, at 6 p.m., to hear public opinion on local law 2018-4, to amend Article 15 of the Village Code entitled Vehicle Weight Limits and No Through Traffic to limit truck traffic on Fair Street and Moore Ave. All interested parties and citizens will be heard who are for or against this addition. Okay, let me just read, I'll read that again, then I'll take public. Uh, President, need a motion. Yep. Open. Make a motion. We open the public. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Okay, I'll read it again like I did the other one. Be it enacted by the Village Board of Village Board of the Village of Walton. One, the new provision shall be added to the Village Code to it 49-22.2, two and a half ton weight limits established. Except for local deliveries or pickup, no person shall operate or move a vehicle or combination of vehicles over, on, or through the area listed below if the weight of such vehicle or combination of vehicles and the load is greater than two and a half tons. A, Fair Street, and B, Moore Street. This local law shall take effect upon filing with the Secretary of State of New York. Is there any public comment on this? Yes. Yes. Sir. Well, number one, uh, I feel as if it's, it's targeted. Could you, can you just give your name for, the, for everybody? The, I, we know who you are. Ed Rossley, Delaware County Fair. Okay. Um, I, I feel as if it's actually hitting towards the fair, and I know where part of it came out from was because it was a tractor trailer that came up more street the wrong way. Um, in turn, we've always had signs at, at our things, and, and there's a two foot by three foot sign that says no through truck traffic. And that's there year round because we purposely leave it there year round. And they got up on some people's lawns. We took care of those lawns right off the bat. My concern is you, you put in a law like that at two and a half tons, you're wiping out any fuel delivery trucks, any any trucks that are you know, delivering gas. Well, no, I said that except for deliveries. Yeah, but that comes during the fair time too when they're coming down in there. And that's, you know. But that can, they can come in. Uh, a delivery can come in and, and somebody else can't. Right. Am I understanding that correctly? Right? So except for deliveries. And the problem that we also have is on Fair Week when we're releasing cattle trailers and stuff, they come up through Fair Street. We purposely have it so nothing, nobody gets in the way of traffic coming through. They come down through the one gate, our main gate in our parking lot, and they come back through and when they exit, they exit Fair Street. And that's only because we're worried about people and traffic and cutting all the way back across all the traffic for the trucks and trailers. So, I mean, as far as Moore Street, we try we try not to do anything. I mean, I felt sorry for the guy that did that because he was told that he had to go up through there. And I jumped right on his case because this is, I don't know what you people can't understand. There's a sign, it's two foot by three foot. It's right there. In turn, I mean, your village trucks and everybody else, when they're going down in their snow pound or anything, they're all going to go that way down the So, that's where I have a concern is for safety purposes, you know, on, on Fair Street. On Moore Street, I can see that. I mean, that's that's a bad corner to turn. Anyways, this year was one of them fluke years. I mean, usually it's all blocked off before even Fair Week starts. So, I mean, on the upper end. But we didn't happen to notice it. Villages didn't notice it. So, in turn, those guys, you know, it was a new fair ride company that came in there. And they had no idea. They were willing to change. They were willing to take care of whatever problems there was. And we told them we were going to take care of the issue. My concern is, is enacting that as a law, especially like on Fair Street, because we got accustomed to help the police department and everybody else out. So we have that circle of traffic rather than having that ball on bottom that up and in. Okay. Anyone else want to say anything? I just have a question. How big a truck is two and a half tons? Good question. I don't <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I mean, is, is that What you can tell, what's two and a half tons? It's 5,000 pounds. That's a pickup truck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anything larger than a pickup truck? An empty pickup truck weighs 50, 50 something. I got a 5,500 Dodge dump truck and that weighs in 11,000 pounds. Right. Right. So, so I mean, you're, you're wiping all their, their trucks you're out. You're talking a <laughs> uh, three quarter ton pickup. Yeah, most even three quarter ton trucks are up over eight six hundred. Right. Yeah. How are you know did um well, first of all, let's get out of, of, if no one else in the public wants to say anything, let's get out. Yeah, sure, go ahead. I'm Lenore Dutcher, I live on South Street, and I'm across from Moore Avenue. This has been an ongoing issue for years. Um, through no fault of the fair. Please don't think we have anything against the fair, because we all enjoy it. Lord knows we don't have much in this town for people to enjoy. But I have seen them get out of their tractor trailers and move the barriers to go down the street. I have also witnessed them 
hit the telephone pole that is on the corner by the fire pipe. I personally called NYSAG to report that. This was probably six years ago. Fortunately, no damage was done. You know, I was concerned about the wires that came into our house. It is a safety issue. If you have kids riding their bicycles on Moore Avenue, you have people walking to the fair on Moore Avenue, and most of the time it's not during fair week. It's when they first come in and when they leave. That's the issue that we would like addressed. Okay. That's it for the public. I'm just going to close. I need a motion to close the public part of it. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Now, we can. Anybody wants to say anything on the void? We know how the, how um, that weight limit became part of the law. What what was used? How did we come up with the weight limit? Huh? Who came up with the weight limit? I don't know. I believe the attorney did. Did he? Oh, uh, Dave Murthick. Yes. He, I, I, I also yeah, think, too, that thi just, this, just came up with it. Okay. whatever weight limit we're putting here is, how can I word this, in a way that <laughs> it's not to come down on everybody that comes in there. It's something to have a tool to use if someone does violate it and something happens. Somebody gets, like, going on private property. We don't have anything to to go on right now. There's no summonses we could issue basically for this old village law that you know you know what I'm talking about. That's that's one of the main reasons why we're doing this. Not that we're gonna have somebody sitting there looking at every car that comes around, the truck that goes around. But if there is someone who violates it, then we have a law to go back on that we could do something with. That's my my take on it. But uh, we 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 could uh, I guess we could adjust the weight, you know, the weight, the weight you write, the weight does. But, but again, if you listen to what I was reading, this is not pertaining to any deliveries or anything like that. So your gas deliveries, your oil deliveries, whatever kind of delivery, that doesn't, th this is mainly for others. So that, when, the, when the fair is on, if they're picking up or delivering cattle, they're legal. Yeah. As long as they don't go on somebody's, right. yeah. Well, I'm just saying. Well, it, sa it says right there. It, it, sa it says they're delivering. So I mean, fair week. If they come down there, go up it. They're either bringing in, making a delivery, or they're picking up. Yeah. But we have something to, to go on a law that we have to enact if we have to against somebody. That was the main thing about it. not against the fair or anybody like that. It's just that there are certain people that are. Unfortunately, where they live are always the victims of people who don't listen, and we have something now that we could talk to the police and say, hey, we need to write them up, and this is what we need to do. So that's basically the only thing we're trying to do. Well, let me, let me ask a question. If, if they're delivering a ride down to right. the fairgrounds, <laughs> isn't that what caused the problem in the first exactly. place? Right. <laughs> and I think the focus needs to kind of remain on the tractor trailers. I mean, those are the, the, the issue is the tractor trailers. You try to pull an 18 wheeler down Moore Avenue, you're driving on somebody's home. It's simple as that. We've watched, I've lived there. So we need to reword this a little bit. And I've watched no, it for 20 no semis. No semis? Fair that, Street, it, they, um, it's a fair Street, they can make a swing. Yeah, you know I mean? but. See, I'd rather, I'd rather change the law I'd to make it change the law to have a weight limit that was more realistic than have a law that we only enforce when it's really broken and somebody's lawn gets damaged and the other time we don't really enforce it like in fact what you're getting at I'd rather have a law that that took into account the trucks that are big enough to be useful but not so big they damage lawns because they can make the turns but would semi be a good enough description we have to put weight on right semis are usually yeah, certain yeah but i, I don't i don't go with like a eighteen thousand pounds or see we, and we got to have something we can post on the side right. it'll be there all year but you need eighteen thousand pounds then absolutely no you know no semis what at eighteen thousand what would get through uh, most any uh, uh, small town, dump town, small dump trucks. Small dump trucks. Would get but, all right, so I, I, so I think that we need to go back and just put the weight down, the proper weight that would fit the. the I mean, I think a CDL license is twenty four, twenty eight thousand. I mean, 
So if you went with that, you gotta have a CDL to drive a tractor trailer. So I mean, anything under, I don't know what it, what the actual weight limit is. I believe it's. We could we could do that. Do the proper weight thing on it. So what are you putting? Can we change it? Do yeah, we have to go back? Yeah, we can change it. Yeah, change it. it. So what had, would what would be the proper what would be a, a, a the proper weight to put down on things? Yeah, if we did eighteen thousand pounds, or I guess what weight would we specify where drivers would know I can or can't I, go? I would over? say eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. It's like a breaking point. Yeah. And then I put no semis. Yeah. Just put your sign up. No semi, you lose slash, you know. Well, the biggest problem is, is getting people to resign. Right. I mean, but well, then if they do it, then we have something to go back on that we can do. Right. 18,000 pounds slash no semis. Something to that effect. Well, and a lot of the reason you know, they're, they're on the grass, not because they're going to wait for it. Could you put a dead end sign there? What does the sign read? Uh, no. Or don't through traffic. Yeah, well, there is one that yeah. put this. The trap, the no through traffic is on the fairground. Yeah, that's right. Well, not out. So yeah. once they so it's not true, yeah, 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 we may, yeah, no. We may get so that they can't come out. Through, yeah. But this guy's So we could put 18,000 no semi on it. That would that would cover it all. And would we, given the way the traffic goes, would we need to, to put the signage both coming in to the fairgrounds and leaving? Well, we got one on the other. Cover ourselves, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I would say yes. I would to cover you guys. Yes. Right. Put one on both ways, yes. Is that good with yeah, you guys? Yeah, you, you, they would address in the stuff you run. Yeah, yeah you know, it's like I had, had talked to the board previously, you know, my concern, like this year it was so wet, this year was just a freaky year, but I mean, it was so wet, they just put uh, uh, new gas lines in down through there that are two and a half feet underground. Um, you know, you start driving a tractor trailer on top of that, you're gonna have some issues. Um, right. And you know, not to mention the sidewalks that's destroyed. My water shot off that you know pokes up off the sidewalk that far. They drive over top of that, and, and you know I'm replacing a water shot. So you know it's all right. So we'll the put one is the least of my concerns. It's so eighteen thousand two oh semi no semi. Is that okay? Well, the signage doesn't. We can word the signage, yeah. but I just need eighteen thousand. Yeah. So are we still doing Fair Street also, or just more Ave? Shouldn't we do? I mean, the problems on both, really. Yeah, we do right? both. Leave them both the same way. Is that? I would say. Well, um, like I say, Fair Street. They're if they come in with a, you know. Well, most of my Fair Street is blocked off anyway. Those guys are up there with the parking. We, we exit. We exit. Yeah. We exit Fair Street, so the traffic isn't. So you got traffic coming in this way, and we exit Fair Street. The biggest concern being the semis. They're showing up before the fair, leaving after the fair. The bigger ones, the bigger rides aren't getting down Fair Street anyway because of height right. restriction. Right. Right. So they got to go down the parking lot and in through that way. So which is, and that's what we try to make them do all of them, you know. Right. So we'll just change the weight on but that. No, and for both of them. Night, all the big pull, the pullers, all the big semis, they all walk that way and they don't have an issue. You know, they can't get turned around to go back the other way. They all come out Fair Street. Well, if you're driving a truck and whether you've got a tractor on the back end from Wednesday or the, the you know, how big a deal is it for the driver of a good big truck to go out the, you know, out through the park by the parking lot and turn left by the armory? The but problem is they when they come they're in, they're all way. facing Fair Street. And there's no room because to turn Because there's no room to turn. See, they come in and pull in like this, yep. then they unload when they, yep. they back out and drive off Fair Street. I've seen them. But we've never had an issue with that, to my knowledge. On Fair Street. On Fair Street, on what, like, the issue was more. And right. we definitely see the problem on Moore Street. Yeah, on Moore Street. We've tried everything. I mean, she, like she says, we got the gate there, we did that, and that. Like I said, so the issue is really no, Moore Street, you know, versus Fair there. Street. That's really the issue, Can too, right, Moore? Can fence closed, the gate closed on Moore Street? Yeah, Moore. They, they do. We do. They do keep that gate closed. The problem is when the semis come down through. Someone has to open it up. They, right? No, they so go down through there, and, they, and, they, and, they, and then they're stuck because they can't go. See, so there's no signage out, out at the end of the street. Right. It's all on our gate. So do we want to leave it both streets, or do you want to just leave it on Moore Street? I'm thinking put it just on Moore Street if you're going to have, you don't have trouble. If you're not really having a problem with Fair Street, Fair Street. From my why, knowledge. Why don't we just do it, why don't we just do it for Moore Street then? Stop it. If we're going to change that, I think that means our right, second right. Yeah. Huh? 
I think if we change, take it off Fair Street, I think we should have a second public hearing so the people on Fair Street can be heard now that they think it's not going to be on Fair Street. Well, that would give us time to figure out what DMV says about the weight limits for the licenses, and so we don't come up with an arbitrary number. Maybe we should stick with something that somebody else has. <coughs> you know, people on Fair Street may not have come because they think that this law is going to be passed. But so you want to you want to put it off until next meeting then? That what you're saying? Well, I'm thinking that we should give them the opportunity to come and be heard if they want to. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, there isn't anything going on over Steve, the fairgrounds you? over the next month. It's or not, I mean, it's it's not that it's got to be done today. Yeah, the fair's over, so yeah. okay, we'll put this off for now then. Mm -hmm. Until next year, so next meeting. Come next year. Well, well, I should. I, I really, I guess, I can't agree with you on that completely because. We got the fever excavated down there doing some water lines right now. Yeah. And all they came in with tech there. Uh, we educated kind of use the other, the other street. Well, I think the gate's closed right now anyway. Yeah. Yeah, they shut, well, fever shut that gate. Yeah. Because they didn't want people driving down in there while they're using water lines. Okay, so we'll come back on this one, okay? Okay. I have a question. Sure. There's a no truck outlet local deliveries only sign at the bottom of High Street. Yep. Right? If we put two of those signs at the base of South Street at the turn, right before the turn, wouldn't that be enough to catch a summons later on if something happened? There's two yellow signs saying there's no truck outlet here, so be careful. Get out of your truck and go ask, where do I bring this thing? Um, Would that work? Would that be enough? I I think that the major issue is going to be more. I really do. Fair, I don't recall ever. No, Roger, uh, I mean, I don't recall. Them tractor trailers on Wednesday night, some of them are over 100 feet long. Yeah. I mean, they got 53 so you're, trailers. Chief, so you're thinking that that, that sign won't work? You need to have well, a Well, I think it'll definitely work. It's something that we can write summonses on. I just think placement. You know, I, I think that's that's the factor here for everybody is, is um, do you... So I mean, it gives us the ability to write the summons, for sure. With that, with that kind of sign. Yeah. So then, if that's the fact, we don't need a local law. Then we just need to put a couple of signs up, correct? We didn't make a local law for over on High Street. We just put the sign there, right? See, their their, their map quest was leading them up that street. Okay. So everyone yeah. who came into the village was told by that probably. But if it's it's leading them in there when they come in, right. you know, it's going to be the shortest, shortest turn, route. turn right. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but if they're all, but if they're putting up signs in the past that the truck drivers ignored, well, that's and we've got the same now, truck drivers coming in this year coming up. But now we got a bill. But we got a village sign up there now that we can enforce. The police can do something with. See the signs that's, now that's are the, down on the gate, not up by the street. They control. But once they turn the corner, they go. The village. Ooh. It's it's really you know the answer would be some sort of some sort of gauge at the end of more F. Not the Jersey like area there the week before and pick it up the week after. <laughs> enough room to get a car. Well, by. Exactly. If you left enough room for a car to enter or exit, yeah. put a Jersey barrier across north across more. We can do that with the signs. Yeah. And at that point it just stops because there ain't no tractor trailer gonna get down there. Okay. Then we don't need the local law. We can put a couple of signs. We need, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, however you want to handle it. Um, as long as it's handled, we got something there to block them. Park Street, I said High Street. I made a mistake. It's Park Street, right? No, no it's, it's High Street. Street. It's it's high Street. Street. It's it's high Street. Street. I said it is on Park also. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that then. I mean, the bottom line is the neighborhood just wants the tractor trailers to stop. That's all. I, you know, I sat there and watched Scott's. No, I, I got you. I, I hear you. Get cleaned out. If you want them on your pocket, but you want to invite them. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> okay, so we won't. What are we doing? So we're not going to do this local law then, right? We're going to just do signage. In your th we're just going to do signs. Based on your experience with the truck drivers that come in and have hit the lawns and stuff, you're thinking that a sign like this would, would be enough? I really, I really do. I, you know, the, the biggest thing is getting people to read a sign. Having a blockade here definitely. Yeah. Gonna see if, video. if we put the signs in a barrier and someone does that, at least now the police have something to write numerous summonses with. Because it was a new. Yeah, we had a different midway this year. So 
So and that's, that's true. That and is true. That's why we the other we midway been there for a hundred years. Yeah. Well, we had but right but off, the right bad part of it is that the tractor trailer that got up on Steve's lawn and the other lawn, he was from the Walton area. Yes, he was. <laughs> now. <laughs> Here's your sign. <laughs> that's, what really, that's what really got me was I said you did not read that sign. As well, I really didn't pay much attention to the sign. You've got so many signs. <laughs> if that's, we, that's why we have them? Yeah. I, I believe if we did a Jersey barrier and put a posting on it that said no semi traffic through this area, a Jersey barrier will leave enough room for vehicular common vehicular traffic. Which would be, you know, pedestrians, cars, etc. Anybody who lives, right? Yeah. Okay, that would be good. You'll just, really. you'll just want to make sure you got not so big that you can't get an ambulance up to there. Right. Because, right. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. You yeah. know, the ambulance does leave that carnival. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. We can do that. Can even be a All too. right. So we're going to do away with this local law, correct? No need. No to. action on it. Doesn't sound like we need it. Okay. Sorry. But everybody, it'll solve the problem. Okay. But okay. we're going to implement the Jersey barrier and the sign. Yes. Which there next year, August 11th, so you can get it there by at least the week August before. It should be there the August weekend before. Yeah. 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 They start yeah. bringing yeah. rides. I would, say, I, would say, I would say August 1st, like that. Yeah. Yeah. That way. I can put it on Jason's shoulders. She's got to remind me. <laughs> when okay. do you guys know when the, the, like the ride company is We don't ever know. We don't because. No, I know for the last six, seven years, they've been showing up two weeks ahead of time. Right. That's why I said, that, you know, August 1st might be a good time to have it. Depends on where they're, they're at with rides, you know, fares. They'll just bring a ride well, in and wrap it up. You know, ultimately, the Jersey barrier is strategically placed, but also stops some other stupidity. Because I sit on my porch and I watch people. Yes. Pull into the end of Moore Avenue, stop. They're half in South Street, and they're picking somebody up or letting somebody off. It creates all kinds of issues. So, strategically placed Jersey barrier will probably stop some of that. Yeah. Okay, let's go. We're gonna do that. Let's move on to the next thing, please, so we can go. We got a lot of stuff here. Okay. Um, the next thing, number three, public input. Is there anyone that wants to have anything else to input? If not, then we'll move on to the abstracts. Everyone had a chance to look at the abstracts yes, and ask some questions. If there's none, I wish to have a motion to pass them. Make a motion, we pass that. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. And the chief is first tonight. Come on down, chief. <laughs> Are we dismissed? Yes, you can. Well, you don't have to be. You can stay. You can stay. I got one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, okay. You can stay if you want, but you, yes, you can leave. Thank you for coming down. I appreciate your input. And tomorrow night I can't leave early. Yeah. <laughs> so I can go and go early, right? Thank you again, guys. Oh, by the way, thank you for the, for the check also helping us out. I appreciate that. No problem. All right. Thank you. Um, hopefully, I'm sure everybody got a copy of the report because I handed it to you. Yep. Um, Rich unfortunately had a family emergency and had to take off. Normally it's out of here sooner, but he flew out of here yesterday. So I'll send that regards. Hopefully this dad is doing better. Um, so as far as what I have, I have that the uh, five portable radios that we ordered are in and working fantastic. They've been distributed to the full-time officers, the ones that we purchased last year, now to the part-time officers. So we are through our radio issues. Um, Kevin Doig did complete the data master school uh, down in Binghamton, so he's now certified. Um, with that being said, we've had a lot of problems with that particular unit. Uh, Dan St. Jacks had to go to Albany a couple times with it. Um, so we are currently in the process. We, we researched the option of purchasing a new unit. Uh, come to find out, even if we do purchase a new unit, they're about to upgrade. So we're going to hold off for a little while. Hopefully, uh, Stop DWI can help finance some of the cost of the new one. Uh, so that sounds like a very plausible is answer. There, is there a way to get a, a second-hand one until the new ones come out? Actually, I think they, they've <laughs> we've had it there enough that it's becoming new. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, they've updated and changed it. So much, exactly. Right? So I think that we're we're going to be okay until that gets here. At this point, other than the few flaws that just always seem to come up. Yeah. Um, the step grant was awarded. I was a little disappointed. It went down some. 
Uh, I have no idea why we've contacted them. They didn't get back to us. Uh, it didn't go down a huge amount, but it seems with all the work that we've done and with the fact that the board graciously put an officer on step on a certain day of the week, and that those officers have been extremely productive yeah. uh, enforcing those summonses, which it could be every day in that particular area. Um, I can't believe it went down, so we're going to be in touch with STEP to figure out why they did that to us. Other than they're the state of New York, and they can. Um, I do have a request for school. Um, I'd like to send Devin Dunphy to Forensic Investigator School. Um, that's not really what it sounds. Uh, forensic Investigator is actually uh, part of the Child Advocacy Center. Um, they are an investigator who deals with handicapped children uh, at need people that aren't really uh, have the ability to express their, their story. Um, it's a three-day course. It's at the Meadows Compound in Cooperstown. It's from the 18th through the 20th. There's no cost other than Devin's time. Um, Do you know who's doing the training? Uh, Healy. She's, uh, I think it's Heaney or Healy. She's a psychologist, but very renowned. We've actually oh, okay. worked with her before on children's cases. Um, the Delaware County is now starting its own child advocacy center, and it's going to become, it's mandated. Um, and the, the purpose being, just so you guys are aware, um, when a child victim or a handicapped victim is brought in, what happens is they're frequently brought in by multiple agencies at different times. Um, the purpose of the Advocacy Center is to combine all those different agencies that need to be involved in that interview at one place at one time so the child isn't exposed over and over and over to, a, to explain a traumatic event. So it works out very well. The only thing is the people who are involved in that have to be a forensic investigator. And as unfortunately Devin catches most of our cases, that's why I'm recommending he go. So if I could have permission for that one. I'll make a motion to allow it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Um, annual firearms qualifications have started, and about half the officers have been through them at this point, and we're scheduling the rest of them through the remainder of October, so we should have everybody done. Um, we made it through the fair. I gave you guys a summary of what, mm -hmm. it's hard to believe what we could get involved in with the rain that we had, but it was mm -hmm. intensive and extensive. Um, and the only other thing I have is I'd like to bring up to more of the public and remind the board to remind us that school's back in session, mm -hmm. drive safely, and the parking at Townsend School will always be an issue. And I'll explain the difference between parking and standing one more time. <laughs> parking means that you are in your vehicle, in the driver's seat, sitting there, and standing means that you are pulling up, waiting, and somebody's getting in. Um, parking means, I'm sorry, I got confused. That. Parking means you've exited the vehicle. Exited, okay. exited the vehicle. Standing means you're sitting there waiting. So when somebody pulls up anywhere on North Street, pretty much from here to East Street <laughs> during this time of year, they're parking and it's illegal. I had a question about the cones that the crossing guard is putting out every mm -hmm. morning. The, one, the, the four cones at the Congregational Church, can they not be put in the public road well, and I understand what you're saying. The only concern is if we put them back at the edge of the driveway, people park there. We've had multiple complaints over the last couple of years about people literally to the point of being aggressive towards the people from the church, kind of church, going out and saying, hey, we need to get out, and them saying, no, we're not moving. And by the time we get there, then they leave because they know we're coming. Um, that, that really actually has solved that problem because because those four cones are there, they don't park in front of the driveway. And it, and it used to be, and I would like to see it again because our crossing guard, Lori, has problems with this, is an area back from, in that fire zone, which is a fire zone to begin with, okay. um, from the pedestrian walkway. Because she still, to this day, will call us and go, listen, somebody just pulled up halfway into the pedestrian parkway and parked, mm -hmm. got out of the vehicle. They're not standing. They parked, got out of the vehicle, and go get the child. I remember when things, some years back, when things, several years back, got were hot and heavy about that whole area, and we kicked it around, and 
I was always surprised that the area with the yellow hatch marks ended up being as small as, it, I yeah. mean, it wasn't you, but I mean, right. it ended up being as small as it is, and based on the intensity of the concern and the, the hype at the time, I, I would have expected us, the board, to have made it a longer end-to-end -end distance than it ended up being. But and, and unfortunately, uh, Mr. Brzee, I, I don't think it matters where those hash marks are, people are going to do it. It really is. The village went through, painted all, every line near the school has been painted. They made it bigger this year. Yeah, and there's just no, you know, there's no excuse, and it's us enforcing it. Well, and it's not exactly uh, the same thing, but we live over there, and people park there waiting for their kids an hour, an hour and 20 minutes exactly. ahead of time. We call it, uh, they're tailgating. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah, that's that's always a concern. I know it's a concern. I know the board is going to get approached. They always do. Um, we normally kind of give a little bit of a leeway because you have a lot of parents bringing in their kindergartners pre-K. They don't get the point or the importance of it. Let me ask you this. See how Stephen brought this up. Mm -hmm. um, what if you tried it and if the car is parked there again? You let us then you go back to doing it the way it was, the way you are doing it as far as the cones yeah certainly i that was that was a decision that i made with one of the trustees of the con church um uh, unfortunately mayor I, I will do it but unfortunately i guarantee you within a week there's going to be a problem well I, I would say give it a shot and if it happens then go back to plan b and do it again that is will. there an apron to their driveway, or is it just the sidewalk? sidewalk. And that's Explain it. why they have to be there. So, she might oh, okay, concern would be, yeah. okay, my then concern leave it would be if we've had cones for the past X number of years, and where the driveway comes in, and you know, and then this year they're not. People are going to think, oh, they didn't put the cones up. Well, the cones are already there. Parked there. Which, you know, human nature being what it is, and when you it's need a parking room. space for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they'll leave it the way it is, and we'll see okay. for now. Just leave it. Okay. okay. Anything else? No other. Yes, than you that. do. Yes, you do. I do have more. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. What am I doing now? <laughs> what did I say that you're going to have to talk to the board about? That I send everybody a copy of from the sheriff's department. Oh, we're discussing that here. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a private. I mean, this. Yeah, is, no, I didn't know if that was going to be the yeah. discussed here or, or in an executive this session. This doesn't have thing. to go to executive session. Sure. That's just that. Um, the Delaware County Sheriff's Department is implementing programs called AVL, Advanced Vehicle Locator. Um, it's a, it's a neat tool. It really is. It's got a lot of really great things in it. I actually got to see one in action this morning. Um, it has the ability to pinpoint through GPS the exact location of a vehicle at pretty much any moment. It can tell you the vehicle speeds, it can tell you directions of travel, it can tell you all kinds of things. It has um, a mapping system which can be sent to that particular patrol car where if a vehicle, for instance a state police unit, is involved in an incident outside of town, um, they can send us the information. We, in turn, will know exactly where the state police vehicle is. It brings up GPS coordinates, and it also brings up a, basically the equivalent of a GPS to follow to that particular vehicle. Um, it has a means of providing <coughs> from the dispatch center directly to that particular vehicle um, something similar to a text message messaging system. Uh, that way you're not utilizing airtime if it's a critical situation. Um, it, has, uh, it has a variety of things. It has the ability for the officers on scene of an incident to run the plates, do all kinds of stuff that dispatchers normally do. Um, the cost is approximately $50 per car per month, which would be about $100 a month for us. Um, Application for the village, I don't think, is the same as the application for the state police and the sheriff's department. Um, we're in a one square mile village with traffic moving around constantly, so locating our vehicles, I don't believe, should be in this should ever be a situation. Um, it's got a lot of nice toys. Is it worth the money? I don't know. I mean, I'm, without knowing a whole lot more about it, when I read through the information and just like one, they probably go by Paul's recommendation because he knows the village and the, the police force and the cars. But two, it just seemed like a phenomenal idea for the state police or the county police 
but maybe overkill relative to the needs of a small little village. But, you know, so that just seems, it, I know it's not a great expense, it just seems like a lot of technology for one square mile. Um, but, but, but I'm not out there stopping people and wondering, you know, what's going to happen next. So. There may be other trainings we can go through with that money too that we haven't gone through before too. So that's another thing you can use it with. But anyway, we even ask something. How is it monitored? Paul? It's and monitored. Who monitors yep. it? Well, it's, it's actually uh, it's a data usage through a cellular service that reflects the information to the sheriff's office. So, so nine one one nine one one center at any given point can say this is exactly where Walton PD's unit is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, like I said, it has a lot of things, and I, and I agree with Dave a lot. I mean, application at the county and the state level, um, the town of Colchester should have one. I just question, is it feasible? And my other concern comes, as you all know, with board members, because you've heard me gripe about this before, is the unfunded mandates that come with it following them. You know, what happens when this unit goes down? Um, one of the things that comes to is a concern of mine right now with this particular unit, and I do not know the answer, I apologize, but we're recently with our brand new track system that we got the grant for and got brand new computers, something in that system was holding information, collecting files, and we got to the point where it wasn't working already. This is two years. Um, Fortunately for us, we have Rich Kelly and Dan St. Jacks who sat down and talked to probably a hundred different people and figured out what to delete, took a chance and deleted it, and it's working again. So I'm concerned if we put one more mm -hmm. program into this computer, at what point are our computers not going to keep up? At what point are we now buying hard drives? At what point are we... I just, it, again, I can't say it is an awesome little system. What about um, police officer safety? Uh, absolutely, it's beneficial to police officer safety and the fact that um, even if uh, in critical, let's say you have a, a unique traffic stop and that the officer doesn't have time to call in the plate before he gets out, they're going to know where that car is. Um, God forbid something happens. It has an, an option for uh, basically a panic. You know, you hit a button on the screen and every cop in 100 miles sees that that car needs help. Um, and gives a mapping to them to show where it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's got, it, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence, it's, it's a cost thing. It's, if we don't do it now, is this is it like, is there a window of time? Mayor, you probably can answer that question better than me. Yeah, I, I think it's now or never, because I spoke to the sheriff, and he said he's gotta have it in by middle of this week, how many cars are gonna be involved, how many communities, and then it's a, it's a so, but I don't know if next year you could do it either. So uh, they're, they're doing it through a, a grant through the county. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. I think that's what the issue is okay. on time frame. Okay. It's a shame the county 911 system didn't pay for it. That way they could do the monitoring of everybody on the 911 system. The the actual well, cost of the units themselves are being picked up by the county. Really? Yeah. So and but we also had a a live scan fingerprinting system given to us and four years later we get hit with service charges that were just ridiculous and that's you know the yeah, unforeseen just, the sheriff that said that month. our only cost would be whatever the rental thing is per month that any kind of breakage or anything else that they would take care of it forever never on that that's what he says yeah, really. <laughs> but, that, but that's yeah, that that's today i don't have that in writing so i mean Teresa, you got a strong feeling one way or the other? I don't know really, depending on the on the chief for that. I sort of agree in that we're small and <laughs> if something happens here, everybody's out their front door anyway and they'll call 911. <laughs> Yes. It's not like, you know, I mean, the Sheriff's Department and the State Police, they're out in the country and they're all, you know, kind of isolated, but... Right. Town of Colchester, I, I would highly recommend it for them. I mean, Sydney PD, yeah, I, I don't know, you know, Sydney PD is kind of like Delhi PD, they have an, an endless amount of money, yeah. you know, it seems like, compared to us, and they can make... You know those purchases. Dalhai, Dalhai has Dalhai actually initiated the system before the sheriff's department got involved, and they love it. Yeah, to me, the gamble is: is it going to be mandated next year, and now we missed right, out? Right. Well, and we're we're tying ourselves into a another service contract type mm -hmm. thing, yeah. and that's I, 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 I. It's another one of the things too. If we get it, it we will be able to get rid of it. Well, yeah. You know, once you get it's it, kind it's kind of like Narcan. Yeah. yeah. Right. <clears throat> 
As best so, you can tell in the last year, roughly, if there have been situations where, boy, this would have come in handy, either as someone needing help or someone that could have provided help? Um, you know, one of the things, yeah, yeah, I can honestly say that, and it more so... The guy that went to water? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the... Um, that being that being said, you know, uh, I think more so us helping them than them helping us. Um, uh, we don't know, you know, a lot of our guys don't know the the northern end of, of the town of Walton. You know, they may not know some little road off some little road. A lot of them do, but some of them wouldn't. Um, with that said, you can reverse that. And Eric Alexander, who's a sheriff's deputy who also works for the village of Walton, said, you know. There's guys on the sheriff's department who have no clue where New Street is. That's right. You know, uh, they they're not gonna know Corey Street. You know, so uh, though they're here, they still have to be directed. That ties up airtime. Or they gotta just look at a screen that's because your car is already just put the broadcast. The other thing too that you I don't know if how familiar you are with this, Steve, or not, but um, they're implementing it where fire and ambulance units are also gonna be. Yeah. yeah. In, we, within this system, we got uh, we have some iPads. We are making uh, four of our trucks hotspots with that, so we can, right. we, we get them in with touchscreen with IM responding, with also uh, uh, water locations, right. information, anything that you need. It's a vast there. database. Yeah. It's, it's certainly. Yes. I mean, hey, you know, if if I was sitting here looking at a board that had an endless amount of money, I would say without a question. Plus, the flip side is, Big Brother is watching this. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You know, so now Delhi is sort of going to be in our business. They're going to know exactly where we are, we, and we're going to know exactly where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and not that, you know, I, I mean, our officers have nothing to hide. Right. You know, I mean, if their car is sitting someplace for two hours, it's because they were, had reports to do, they had whatever to do. Right. Uh, but, you know, everybody always has to have an opinion about everything. So, right. you know, the chit chat that will go on without knowing the facts. So I would say that if anyone has a strong desire to do this, to make a motion, and then we can we'll see how it goes. If not, then we're going to let it go. What's the time frame for the grant? Is it going like to be this week? This no, week? I mean, oh, the distance? Yeah. I'm not sure, Jody. I mean, according, pre pretty much when this came down, my initial response to it to the to the sheriff's department was no we don't want it uh, we're we're a small community uh, we know where we are right. most of my guys are very good about calling out on traffic stops you know um, we have the dispatch center for that uh, that was my initial contact with it uh, the sheriff himself called me and I said listen you you don't have to really convince me because in a perfect world we'll take whatever we can get and that's when I directed him to the mayor and he's, he's texted me three four times and he said tomorrow I think is the they gotta get a number in so it just see, I don't, for the village of Walton it just see, almost seemed like a solution in search of a problem you know? I if it was up to me, we'd have manual typewriters <laughs> and a good pen collection. Because I, I, telling you what, somebody's got a good pen collection. Not good enough. <laughs> so, I, so like I'm saying, if anyone feels that the need for this, they we need to make a motion, then we'll see if anybody seconds it, and we'll go from there. Uh, you don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. I, I am actually, I am split right down the middle. It's an option I would love to have for our guys. But I also understand finances. Okay, you're going to add another twelve hundred dollars a month. A year, uh, a, year, a, year, a, year a year, for yeah. that hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Though so there have been times when that has seemed like a lot of money. I believe me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just so. I I have concerns with any technology, the upkeep. I mean, if if the sheriff himself is saying <coughs> we have the upkeep, and he means it's forever. That's what he told me. So. He told you. Yeah. He said, all it'll ever cost you is the, the, the monthly fee. And, and I do know from talking to Dan St. Jacks that there's a good potential that the monthly fee could be less than what that was initially quoted at. It's all based on data usage and... Um, um, units too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and Mike Mills, I believe, has his car set up with some program that's $50 a month. And according to St. Jacks, he's not using anywhere near the data that they thought they would. As the guys become more versed, they're going to use it more. Have you spoken with our, our officers about it? How do they um, that? 
they're they like technology they're all young <laughs> okay um but they really don't like technology when it doesn't work they really gripe and cry a lot um so uh, you know i would just hate to pass up an opportunity at a, at a, at a, a really good safety tool well that's the, that's so the then make the motion push and pull. we'll see where we go from there i'll make a motion that we do it is there a second second all in favor aye aye uh, I'll say okay, that. so I guess that's it. We're doing it. All right. Okay. That's it for me. That's it for me. Yeah, but you got to stay because we got to go into yes. executive session later. Okay. All right. Thank you. Superintendent of Public Works, Mr. Smith. I Don't go to Washington and come to Walton. I love to say. I love to say that Mr. Smith goes to Washington. <laughs> Oh. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Everybody got a report? Yeah. How's your new position fitting? Is it all right? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I love that. That's, That's great. Wonderful. <laughs> there's, there's hope for you yet. I'm a good liar. <laughs> now say it with all that big grin. Give him another one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the guys have been pretty busy. Yep, we've been doing more between rain and, and the other yeah. stuff. Got a, a bunch of tree stumps done, and, and yep. the, the, the couple things that we've been getting complaints about all the time over Griswold Street, the sidewalk, and the stuff over in, in Fancher. I mean, it's uh, it's good. Slowly but surely. The leak detection, that's the big thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Matt's been, he came in a couple times early in the morning. And, Looking for some stuff, and he found the one out here across the street. So we got that patched up. Good. Is Matt still the assistant superintendent? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Anybody got any questions? Oh, the handicap parking sign. I went out and looked, and they're, they are the only. The only I, I had right. to put the the theater. I don't know now if it's a theater group or Matt. It, it, wondered if right now the handicapped spots both of them you have to pull in uh, op opera avenue mm -hmm. and then pull in and they were wondered if we could leave the one for the, coming up this way closest to, to Gardner in place and then the the other second spot on the other side of the stake so you could come up Gardner and turn right into a handicap spot so you'd be one spot so they coming up yeah nose to nose they would end up being right the problem with that is matt and i went over and looked at that after okay. we talked about it the problem with that is if you come in off a of gardener place and you pull in that way trying to get back out yes you're gonna have to back out you know the car's facing this way you're gonna have to yeah. back out and it's a small then you gotta go back just, out into one-way street i'm just thinking yeah. the spot so itself. that's why we ended up doing the two on this side now it makes sense yeah okay yep. okay did we talk about why we couldn't put them as head in spots in front of the theater with signs right there you know people park right in front of the I don't theater know. at the base yes, of the they driveway. did it's we did right ex yes i don't remember what That's we said the curb isn't it yeah a curb, curb right? yeah yeah and we talked about doing a curb cutout but right the, the regulations don't right. allow it yeah. given the yeah. specifics yeah there's not enough room between the edge of the sidewalk and the street right. it'd be too right. steep of a right. ramp and, okay any other questions for Butch? He has something else to say, right? Yeah, I got a couple things. Um, Go ahead. I do have, we got some lights out, already light out on the bridge. Um, we have one guy in the crew who was willing to do an LED conversion to all the lights, make them all LED. Um, the quote for all those parts are like four to 450. Hopefully if we stay within there, but so we wanted to ask permission to do that if you wanted to do that. And if we do LED lights, we won't have the problem we're having. Um, he'll get rid of the, the eye, so they'll be on a timer. So they'll come on the same time every single day. <laughs> be nice. And go off it's the like, same time every single day. It's sort of like a magic trick. <laughs> well, which ones will be on tonight? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get rid of the eyes, you know, the, the, the photo cells. Um, Are those ours? Yeah. Yeah. Can we use the bulbs, that we, the working ones that come out of there? Can we use them somewhere else? Oh, um, no. No? No. Yeah, that's one of those deals. They came and did the project, and then 
Here it is. Here's. Here I was. So we got to do the DOT the, did it, no one's yeah. doing us now. And we can call them and they don't. We, uh, DOT won't do anything. I've asked like a number of times. I think they should be changed just for safety. People are walking over the bridge all the right. time and you know, there's dark spots because this yeah. light's not out on and this not, you know. So. Any other pluses, LED be less, less money too. You know, we got to pay to do it, but right. we usually yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot less, less power. electricity, a lot less power. I make a motion that we uh, go ahead and get the supplies and have you guys. Is there a do second it? on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Keep okay. it within Carry. the keep it within the five hundred dollar mark. You said right. Yeah. That. Yep. Yep. Um, the next thing is make a motion to hire a new mechanic. We did. Then we interviewed three people and had three very very good candidates. Um, and one definitely stood out as far as being the ultimate fit for everything we have going on. Yeah, the three of us that sat in on them yeah, were Steve, Matt, and I. unanimous on the, like you said, they were, they were all good, yep. real good. Yep. But this one is, I think will be the best fit for all the different positions and yep, things he's got to do. And when would his hire be effective? Um, the 24th of September, if not sooner, depending on the situation. You mean if he can start now. right, yeah. correct. Yeah. Any questions? Background check. Background check. Mm -hmm. I don't have a background check. A lot of really, really good references. <clears throat> do we do that, Jody? Background check on new hires. That's probably something we should be doing. Actually, we don't do very many of them, except for the police officers. Right. And yeah. we do background <laughs> checks on them. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You do. Yeah. <laughs> No, <laughs> I did a background check on you too. <laughs> if that was the case, I wouldn't say. <laughs> Are we allowed to say what his name is? Or? Yeah. Yeah. What's his uh, name? Kevin Coombs Jr. He lives right here in the village. That's always nice. Yep. He's been a mechanic his current job for 17, 17 years, roughly. 18, yeah. So I don't think he's looking to go anywhere. He's very he's very excited just for the interview opportunity so and he's a guy that's willing to do like you did yeah. uh, drive the plow truck yeah. and do other Concrete, whatever black top he's looking you know he really likes different everyday stuff nothing the same so well, that's do a good you know thing. The, the cost of a background check excuse me the, the cost background of a background cost. check uh if it's done by us zero um it, we're we can do things within limitations. Um, for instance, like doing criminal histories, etc. For a background check, we can't do that. Um, there are internet agencies that will. Or if the sheriff's yeah. department do it with special. So when you do a background check, with our, right. you, they, with our agency, that, the that's where it becomes the issue. So as yeah. far as like finding their, other than our local criminal history, um, which works in this application because Kevin's been here his whole life. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of limited. I mean, we can reach out to other agencies and say, have you ever arrested this guy? But if it's somebody who's come into the area from another area, we very well can miss something. Mm -hmm. Where with our law enforcement officers, it's a little more detailed, more exceptional. This president is very well known by the community and everybody around you, too, right? Mm -hmm. I would recommend it. Yeah. I'll make the motion that we hire him then. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. And number three. It's been brought to my attention about a public works training in mm. my camp. All right. And You're going to be educated. Yeah, I should probably, <laughs> I'm thinking, maybe go and try to learn some new stuff. Wait, and where is it, Butch? Lake Placid. Oh, sure. Wow. October yeah. Wait 15th to 17th. Jody and no, no, is there a party going on? <laughs> oh, are we not invited <laughs> to this? <laughs> this is a different time, right? I think there's some code training in here, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that would be that would be me yeah. too, my committee. <laughs> so when is it? October fifteenth to seventeenth. And what's the cost? I have no idea. It's in your paper. It is. Yeah. The conference itself is one thirty-eight. And You're then gonna stay in your truck, right, to save some money? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All inclusive truck. Yeah, all inclusive truck. October and the around it. You won't have to pack your speed all. That's for sure. No. <laughs> Go, we would go. prefer you didn't ever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really How much is the hotels up there? Um, and then the hotel, the one at the where the conference is, is two fifty. 
and it includes all the meals and things too. For so that would be two nights? nights. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, three days, two nights. Is this something that's going to be in the budget, Jody? Yes, there's training money. I say let him go. Okay, you make I a motion. Make a motion. You second it? Has there been a motion and a second to Aye. let Butch go? Aye. Aye. Oh, okay. Opposed? Carry. It's just you going, right, Butch? Yes. Yep. In me. <laughs> I think Steve is going to go, too. Alright, we'll have to get, maybe we'll take the Durango up. Yeah. Uh -huh. Alright. Well, uh, sure. And I do believe that is it for me. If there's any other questions or... With the nope. I think so. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. We can tell him to go ahead and give a phone call, can't we? Jason? Mr. Mayor. What? He can go ahead and give a phone call to the hire, can he? Oh, yes. Go ahead and give him a call. Tell him it's official. Just do it outside because when he starts moving and hollering. Hey, uh, <laughs> Paul, while we're here sitting, would you go, the, the chief, the sheriff, let him know that we're going to do it? Because he said he had the... Yep. Give me that right now. Please. Thank you. Jason, who was the other man here? Roger Dibble. <coughs> Ed's the president of the fair, and Roger's the vice president of the fair. And where are you? Secretary, treasurer, chief cook, bottle washer. Yes, yeah. yes. yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> I do a little bit of everything. Um, this mm -hmm. month's report, um, I didn't get it to you earlier because I got it done about five minutes before I left today. Uh, we can go over it briefly. Uh, we did have a flow violation for this month of 1.752 million gallons a day. Our permit is. 1.55 you can see we had a max daily flow of 2.3 um, that's with craft and full till and with the I and I issues we've been dealing with I know um, Butch and the guys have been out looking at things we've been out various times looking at things we're trying to narrow some stuff down but um, it is a lengthy process to try to figure out if it's actually groundwater or if it's general use through the pipe so um, we know where there's some issues and um, Butch knows as well where there's some issues, so we'll see what we can do with those. Um, because the flow is up, the chemical use is also up. Right now, craft is shut down and our flows are back down to normal, so hopefully things will continue down though. Do they know when we shut down this time or is there something special Last year on? they shut down Fair Week because everybody wanted Fair Week off, so they shut down Fair Week and this year they um, they had some maintenance on a cooler or something, so they this is when they could get it scheduled, so they shut down. Okay. You know, 10 years ago, no, they never shut down. They just rearranged things within the plant and then they fixed what they needed to fix, but now because production is light, they, they shut down a couple times a year okay. and do their maintenance and what have you. Did the rain push this over? Yes. Yeah. Yep, the rain was a huge factor there. I don't know what our tally was for the month of August, but I, I know fair week it was a lot. So, um, and leading up to that, it was quite a bit. So the rain definitely attributed to that. Does the state take that into consideration? I think they will. I think a lot of wastewater plants had issues. Um, I was telling the mayor earlier, if this continues to happen, right now they're just gonna throw in a file, but if the file gets big, they're gonna knock on the door and say, you gonna fix this or you know what what's the what's the story so um <clears throat> this is probably is as much rain as we had i think that they'll be more apt to overlook it but if we keep knocking on the door or going over the permit then they're gonna start asking questions for sure so um just have to ask for one thing tonight and that's for uh to request tom ellis heating and air conditioning to replace two heaters in the seabud filter area at a cost of thirteen thousand ten dollars it is a 100 percent new york city cost yes make that motion seconds all in favor aye aye opposed carry uh just to update you we had to um, purchase some software a subscription so we could access our SCADA computer which is our um alarm computer for the seabud building uh, via laptops and cell phones from our home so we can make adjustments and monitor the system. We had to make that. We were using a free software and it alerted that we were using it quite often so it <coughs> kicked us off. We had to buy a new one so, or buy the, so, buy the subscription. So that was also a New York City cost, 100%. So. And how much is that? About $1,000 for the year. Other than that, I don't have a thing. Any other questions? 
Thank you. I, I had the privilege of going over there today and see some of the stuff the guys cleaned up that was <coughs> we, um, still the rag problem. Our rag problem that uh, has been going on and on. Today we entered the clarifier splitter box, which is directly before the clarifiers, because we've been seeing a decrease in flow that we can put to these clarifiers in high water events. Um, Steve can attest to this. Ten years ago, the clarifiers themselves would almost overflow, and then we go out and turn on another clarifier. Now we can't get that water through them at all. We actually overflow the water going to the clarifiers. So we actually emptied the tanks today, and... Uh, these are all rags down in here. We took uh, about two, one and a half to two backhoe buckets of rags out of this area, which is about 10 by 10, um, and put them in the container to go to the landfill. So that, I've never seen that empty, and I've been around there for 15 years, so I don't know. You know, that's the accumulation of rags just in that area since the rags have become a problem. So the bottoms of other tanks are going to look like that as well. Yeah. So, you know, we actually had a guy down in there pulling these things off, and yeah. it was an all-day process. So. I can say it was Shane. Yeah. He shipped it down in there. And Shane, yeah. was, Shane was in the hole well, today. Did you actually yeah. ever go to Northeast Advocated to see if they could improvise something like that? The biggest... The, the screen, remember we thought they, about that? They could like, make a screen. It's the motor works and all of that that's going to be very difficult to do. And stuff. Yeah. Because of its location, so deep in the ground. And if we get... Flood waters, it's going to flood, and that's where the cost is going to come in. Getting all that stuff to the top. So, but because that other thing that we were talking about, that was over a hundred thousand dollars today, wasn't it? I think it was more than that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, closer to a million. Three, yeah. zero. Oh, a million dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, ooh. the screen, fine screen. Oh, okay. yeah, on the front. A million dollars. Whoa, hundred thousand. We'd probably still be talking about it. A million, we could cut us right off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that was what we did today. We're going to actually be back in there tomorrow. There's baffles on this tank. We've got to cut those out of there so we can, we're taking this mixer up out of here we don't use anymore, which actually caught all the rags, which will help with the flow through there. But instead of the rags getting stopped there, now they're going to go through the tank onto another spot to get stuck. So be stuck in the sand. Rob and Peter to There's pay There's nothing else that we can do right, other than buying that. How, how much would a bond for that screen cost? I don't even get my heart going. <laughs> you got your medicine with What's you? What's that face for, Bill? Because he said that, you just started shifting around. No. <laughs> you got a little antsy there. We're, I mean, we're looking at a similar cross project for the water project. Yeah. Um, depends water on project. what your term is and how long, a, you know, how long you want to bond it for. A mechanical screen, you know, your life expectancy um, for most of the mechanical a lot of the moving mechanical parts. I mean, you don't want to take out a, lo uh, a loan for longer than the thing is, you know, going to going to be used for you know, before you have to replace it again. So, you know, you probably look at a, a 20 year loan on you know a million bucks, um, and you know there is some grant funding available for that. Um, as much as the water project? No, the right right now the sewer um, the sewer program is 25 percent grant. And the water is 60. Just the way the state wrote the, the grant fundings. Yeah. Uh, there are some other agencies, uh, USDA, that we funded the water project through last time. Um, you know that could be something to look at. They have between five and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar max grants. So if you're doing a million dollar project, you know your percentage may be a little higher. Um, if we'd be eligible for those, so there's there's some opportunities out there, but there's no you know windfall. We'll buy you a screen and put it in. Um, and it is, it's it's not just the, the screen, which like Jason said, is 20 some feet in the ground and it's a mechanical operation that, that hauls the material from the pit all the way up and out and into a dumpster. Um, but it's got it's it's got water feed to it, electrical feed to it, you end up having to put a building around it. And that, yeah. That's why it gets so expensive Keep to do it. Freezing and whatever um, during the winter. If you're doing it in South Carolina, you could do it outside. Yeah. We're a long ways from that. So those okay. are all the things that we'll they can grow. Okay. The simplest solution is what we've been preaching for a year and a half. Uh, now. I was going to say. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, this is, is going to be a problem in every one of the tanks we have <coughs> because of what's hit, what's hit in over there for 13 years. Mm -hmm. And when we got hired, I got, what, oh, 15 years ago, 
I got hired. Yeah. And we didn't see these things. It was a year or two after that we started seeing them. And we're like, what is this all about? So in that amount of time, this is the accumulation that's happened. As we find <coughs> it, we take it out of there. <coughs> if people just police themselves and they don't do it, we're gonna, we already have a problem there that even a million dollar screen isn't gonna fix because these have been stuck there for 15 it's years. House. It's just gonna so it's just a matter a of now getting them out of there yeah. and then people stop flushing them in. And you know, if, if the village residents don't wanna pay on a bond of a million dollars for 20 years and stop flushing the wipes down the toilet that they can throw in the garbage. But as it stands now, it's costing everybody a lot of money and it that's is. not being covered by the city, right? Correct. Yeah. Depending on where we find them and how it gets coded, the $28,000 pump we got over there sitting on a skid is, was bought in portion because of the rags getting in that thing and taking the balance out of it and ruining the bearings into it. So there's 28000 that could have maybe been five on a rebuild, but we bought a new pump because we don't know how long this pump's going to last that's right. in there. Because every week we're pulling it up out of there and we're pulling a wad of rags out of it like this that's just taking that impeller and it's going like this for a week and it's wearing them out. So that's just that pump. Yeah. So there's. We don't have any way of finding out where these rags are coming from that we can pinpoint where they're coming from. No. No. Not unless you walked um, in everybody's house and knocked on the door and looked on their shelves. Yeah. Yeah. I know uh, DPW was having issues with their pump station, and they sent a letter to, the village sent a letter to all those users, and that did slow it down in that area. But since there's only one pump station, everything else just comes comes to us, and it could be from anywhere. So. I was going to suggest a, a letter campaign. Just, yeah. You know, like, blanket letter to all of the residents in the village and have those have that million dollar bond number present this is what this is what it's going to cost you if you keep flushing your rags down the toilet but of course we have a lot of rentals here and people say well, this well cost if, you, if you if you hit <laughs> half of them yeah you know yeah you're going to you try that with the next water bill it's been on the water bill there's been a note on the water bill since we started talking right. about this. That's right. Yeah. But maybe a separate letter going in would get people's Something attention. More attention getting. Mm, well, we could try it. Really. What's the cost, Jody, to, to to mail a envelope, the letter, the stamp to, to? I don't know. The stamp we have to pay forty-seven cents just for the stamp. Because we don't have a bulk mailer, right? We don't do enough. No. Nope. And if we put it in the same envelope, you know, with the water bill but set you know a separate sheet we're already sending that water bill out so you know it's just a, a good way to do it well and you're tying it into the water bill so it's maybe if we did it on colored paper instead of a piece of white paper yeah you know i don't know it could start by reading attention your water bill is about to increase again that would get their attention mm. That definitely get a few people. We would <laughs> send out the legitimate bill, and then attach to the letter a bolt. Here we go. I know you're gonna say that. That'll get them. Of course, you know who they're gonna come in and talk to. Yeah. <laughs> Should probably send them over to see me. Yeah. <laughs> but we've got lots of pictures like this. Like glasses. Right yeah. So. Send All right, we'll look into it. Send a letter out sometime, would you? <laughs> well, we don't have a whole lot of flowers over there. Every time I got a picture from you, was just <laughs> <laughs> did you find any neat toys? No, no, no That's toys today. Bill, your turn. Last stuff and craft. Yeah. Hello. Thanks, Jason. Yep. Thank you. Um, hey, Bill. Hi. Okay. How's it going? Great. It's getting um, better. It's getting yeah. Uh, we'll get better here. Yeah, um, I can imagine. We, uh, at the wastewater plant, um, we have the grit screw replacement project that's ongoing. Um, some demo work um, has been completed. The new one's on order. Should have that, you know, in, within a month. Um, I guess the main thing on our handout for tonight is talking um, about the uh, A Water project, um, which is something we've been talking about for the last several months. Um, the state has a program out to um, contribute up to 60% of grant funding towards um, a water project. Um, we had submitted a, a application in 2015 in the first round of that um, program. Um, we haven't been successful. Um, we looked at kind of retooling the application. Um, initially, we were just looking at replacing 
replacing you know older undersized water mains which is still a priority um, but replacement of water lines on a given street you know only benefits maybe the folks on that street um, you know within reason so we looked at, at um, trying to target things that are that are needs in the system that would benefit the entire system which is your source and your storage uh, facilities um, the storage the two tanks on, on the hill by white rock um, those were inspected this last year and there's some maintenance items um, that were recommended by the tank inspection company to you know prolong the life of them you know um, painting and, and and rust prevention and stuff like that so um, we looked at that and then uh, also the the curry curry well house is that three where do you go um, the 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 well house that we didn't rebuild in 2012 um, with the past water project the one that's kind of right behind McDonald's um, look at rehabilitating that you know basically it's a, a woodshed on top of a block foundation um, but there's a lot of water that comes out of there and that needs to be you know protected so um, we looked at adding rebuilding that that small building um, in, into the project as well as still replacing water lines um, throughout the village um, so this the the revised project scope um, we came up with an estimate of uh, just below two million dollars um, if the village wants to proceed with implementation of that project or or any project um, you know the breakdown on the 6040 is uh, the 1.2 million in grant but still leaves 800,000 to be um, financed by the village which is a, a bond um, right now EFC is in the range of 4% uh, interest at 30 years um, it, they would always be 30 years interest rates range a little bit but right now they're in the 4% range um, so that works out to a debt service of forty-five to fifty thousand um, dollars that would have to be built into to your budgets. Um, so I mean, we we put all that out in the open to I guess kind of make everybody aware of it. Um, you know, the the investment in your water system is something you've done for the last you know ten years, um, but it's 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 a never-ending you know um, cycle. Uh, the water lines that we're proposing to replace are four inch cast iron water mains that have been in the ground for 75 years um, replacing them with lines that would be up to current codes and we'd be able to get wa better fire flows through better water water um, flows through so that the water quality reaching the residence is is better protected um, and then you know the the uh, work at the tank is, is something whether you want to do a project or not that's that's something that's going to need to be done um, in the relatively near future um, so this this project is something that if you you know you have the opportunity to somewhat subsidize with state funding um, you know if, if you see fit so um, the application is due Friday um, if we do want to proceed um, there's a few items that go with it to show um, that the project is you know ready to move forward um, one of them being seeker um, the next is the bond resolution that uh, Joan Blycamp prepared um, and that authorizes the village to um, take on debt associated with this specific project um, and then ultimately authorization uh, for the mayor to sign the application uh, on behalf of the village um, if we submit applications um, we'd probably find out at the end of the year um, next year would be a paperwork and design year for the most part um, you know maybe go out to bid at the end of the year but it'd probably be a 2020 construction um, to replace you know water mains and do the tank work so well, you said that the one main go from four inches to cone what is called um, six inches the minimum um, the bulk of the water main in the village is eight so we would we would replace it with eight and I think the people on Bruce and some on, on Union, the residue over there is really bad with the water, right? The no, Bush says this house is terrible over there. The, um, so the, dis, the, the water is disinfected at the source to ensure that there's no bacteria in it. And the, the, the um, residual of that disinfectant, you need that to stay in your water to, to keep you know, um, the water clean. Um, when you don't have good flow, through a given segment when there's restrictions in it um, and, and water just lays in that given section for a long period of time, um, your, your disinfectant gets um, consumed um, by the water. Um, so it's it's not a, it, it, you need to have that in there everywhere. So um, 
And the water lines on a prospect are even older than that, I think, right? They're almost like 100 years old. They're very old. In fact, uh, remember, sorry. Like, we, we just got to get the ball rolling right now. It isn't anything definite until... No, yeah. It's, it's an application at this stage. Right. Um, you know, if, if you're awarded, you'll get a, a letter from the state saying you've been awarded project. Do you want to move forward? And then at that, you know, you can say yay or nay. We've been doing this for three years now. Yeah. So I think we, I think we should go move ahead with it and see what yeah. we can get for a grant, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, we have been doing it. It's something we need to do. I mean, I know it's an expense, but how do you explain to people if the water, the yeah. system breaks? Yeah, and, until, and, until and they experience it. Yeah, exactly. And, and then you right say you got to wait until we, until we fix it, and then we got to pay for the whole thing. Right. They don't want to hear what's going to cost them now, but if there's no water coming out of their spigot, right. that's when they want Why didn't you fix it? So right. I, I think we should go ahead with what we've got going and continue. What? Right. At this point, it's just the application process. Right. Yeah. Correct. What does... I couldn't even begin to do this math. What is the forty-five to $50,000 a year... <laughs> the debt payment. Dead service. Dead service. Correlate to per person. Yeah. Or per about household. Probably about ten dollars per quarter. Yeah. Ten dollars a quarter. Per user. So you're looking at about another forty dollars a year per per mm -hmm. address or whatever you want to per bill. But only ten on a. Sorry. Pardon me. Only probably around ten ish on a bill. Right. Yeah. Individual. Right? Yeah. Well, I think yeah, I agree with Steve. I think we got nothing to lose by proceeding with the application. And this is a, your classic. We've been we've done this before. With we have. Pay me now or pay me later, and it's. Uh, well, we did our last big water project. We went through the same thing, yeah. and, and they had put it off in '88. I know, it's, like I, said, I know it's expensive, but the infrastructure eventually is going to be going to collapse, and it's going to have to be fixed. So, so you got to make a motion, get an application Steve? To get it. I'll make it a motion. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What are we Aye. making a motion for? Um, yeah, we got to we got to do them in three <laughs> if we can. Yeah. Um, so the first is a to identify the project as a type two action under seeker, and there's a there's a formal written up resolution, but um, this is your environmental review that you're required to do for any basically any project. Um, there's three levels of environmental review. Type two is the the lowest. Um, and because this project is rehabilitating existing infrastructure, you're not going up to clear the hillside or, you know, clear out a river or something um, because it's existing, you know, infrastructure that you're rehabilitating and bringing it up to current code, um, we would consider it a type two action. Um, so passing this resolution completes your environmental review. Do you have to read this into the... Well, you just do like the bolded thing on my... So we gotta do, now we got to do the second thing is the do the resolution? Yeah, if we, we need to do the sequel resolution, correct. Right. So we need a motion for that. Yeah. Yes. I'll make a motion. Thank you. We need a second. Thank Thank you. You. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. Okay. Um, so what's the third thing? Well, the, this, the, the second thing is the bond resolution um, that the uh, Joan Bly camp pre um, prepared. We just need a motion for that too. Need a motion for the bond resolution. I need a motion for that. I make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. Um, and the third is the authorization for the mayor to sign the application itself. I make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. That's it. There's a few updates on some other projects. Um, Shepherd Street, we're going back and forth with DASNY. Um, so is that what we're doing? No, nope. oh, not no, the other one. We're doing something else. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, CWC, we did uh, the, the five building assessments um, for the flood studies. We did go out with the surveyor um, and confirm elevations. Um, our next step is to set up meetings with the property owners to basically go through the building and do an assessment. So we'll be looking to, to do that this month. Um, okay. Probably start with one, work through the process with CWC. We're kind of the, the first ones to go through this program, so we want to make sure we're presenting the information that they want to see and um, that kind of thing. So we'll probably do one to start and then uh, follow up the others. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Is that it? I just have a question uh, on those uh, 
CWC properties, what, which property is LB-137 Um, Right next to the bank, right? Yep. LB is uh, uh, Mr. Oh, Banker, Mr. Banker, I believe. Yeah. The dance halls on the yeah, second yeah, floor. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Thanks, thank you. Steve? Thank you. Get out of here, Bill. Don't go yeah. away, Matt. Just go away. <laughs> <laughs> no more money. We're we'll broke. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ah. Everybody has my report. <laughs> Don't sound so enthused. <laughs> um, not much to add to that. I think I had something on there about the South Street Stockton Avenue part uh, project. Um, looks like that's going to get delayed probably till the spring. Yes. Um. A funding issue so uh, they're gonna there was some overrides on other projects there was like two or three projects that soil and water were doing this this project was like the number three on the list two of the projects that they were doing there was a large over what do you call it over an overrun overrun yeah. like about three hundred thousand yeah. dollars so they have to put this on hold until the spring before we can do anything yeah. but he's out looking for more money to get it so we can do it as soon as we can yeah. Um, other than that, I think I had training on there. Um, I'm all set to go to training, except that um, I do, did not get a hotel room, so I'll probably be traveling back and forth. So in the end, it'll probably be cheaper, although longer days because it's two hours one way. It's Casanova is where the training is. So I, it's not horrible. I've done worse in a day. Um, I may get a camp spot up there and go camp for three days too i don't know but at any rate it's still a go yeah. um well that's it well you have to pay for the camping site right what's that you have to pay for the camping site right yeah yeah so if you go and get the camping site we can yep. always include that as yep. part of the building um cheaper than a hotel yeah sure yeah i don't think i've got anything else to add to that uh, um yes i do uh we were talking about um Jason was talking about I and I earlier. Um, I sent out today letters to people on all the residents, basically from Mead Street up to E Street on Liberty Street, um, <clears throat> basically uh, indicating that we've observed that we don't see the sump pumps operating uh, as we have in the past, yeah. and that you know if they are in fact putting their storm water into uh, the sewer system, that they need to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. um, is there an or else? There is an or else. It's a matter of um, finding out who's yeah. who's doing it. Or I mean, if did it, you if tell them that it was a violation to do it? it? Yes, it, it is a violation. Right. right, it is a violation of uh, yeah. state code, local code. Um, yeah, so then ultimately it's just a matter of, you know, if it if it continues and we pinpoint who it is, then we'll have to pursue it. Did you send one also to the other place I told you about? Yes. Good. Good. Yep. Right, yep. Good. So just, you know, trying to make an effort to, to address those things. Anything, I don't know. Anything on uh, the apartments where they're running down through the apron onto the street? You've talked to Chris about that? I have not gotten hold of those okay. other ones yet, no. Um, yeah, there's a up on Liberty Street, the motel up on Liberty Street. He's pumping um, pretty regularly, uh, but the problem is that the water is running out to the street, and where his apron is supposed to be, it's starting to blow out the our blacktop there. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So um, we're going to try to make contact with him and see what we can do about getting that fixed. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a big problem. Yet up on, up on, on Bird, Bird Street. Yeah, yeah. it's another yeah. one. Just dumping I'll water out. Yeah, I'll we'll have to go up and, and talk to him. I don't, I, you know, and I don't know up there. It's probably a pretty wet area up there. I don't know if he's just trying to re redirect spring water, yeah. whatever the case may be. Um, I don't know. Maybe with where the hotel or the motel is, you could get an estimate from Butch about how much per square foot it would cost him to fix our blacktop if, if his behavior is, you know, ruining it. Right. Yeah. When you talk money, sometimes yeah, yeah. people listen. Then, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, Chris, I've worked with him in the past. Um, I don't think I'm going to have an issue. Oh, good. Uh, 
okay. I might get surprised, but I don't think I'm going to have an issue. Just needs to be brought to his attention that hey, you know, yeah. you're 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 causing a essentially a public nuisance at this point with yeah. this, so oh, it needs to be fixed. So, okay. I think that's all I got. All right. Thank you. Yep. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, trustee reports. Dave, we'll start with you. The uh, the theater preservation group. Uh, I had to leave that meeting early to come here, and so I'm sure they're done by now. But they had uh, on the agenda the they're improving their Facebook presence with some updated information. Um, they're working on getting a new venue manager. The one they had is uh, relocating. Um, the lobby floor, they're getting this some of the tiles pulling up on the floppy floor and they're getting estimates on a better way to attach the tile to the flooring so it doesn't come up as quick this time. Where is that, Dave? Where is this floor? The theater in the lobby. Oh, in the lobby, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's like a tile floor and they, it was done once, not as well as we had thought or they had thought and it start pulling up in places yeah. so they're trying to find a way to secure it more permanently. Um, and that's basically it. Thank you. Is she still here? I she hope so. Back, yeah. I think by the end of what you're yeah, down below talking. Oh, okay, good. He's probably on the phone there. Okay, I didn't want to go. Okay. Um, Mr. Condon? No. Yes. Okay. Um, Brian, I talked with him about the pool. Uh, everything went well, and I think he said he's going to have probably quite a few of them where they talk should be back next year that uh, didn't aren't going off to college yet so they'll be back probably next year um, this is the first year I've noticed in a long time that we've got a lot of compliments from people yep. about the lifeguards and yep. you know I mean we got some good ones before but this year there's a number of people that I talked to that yep. said they were going uh, we're going to work on uh, the guys in the uh, DPW are going to start working on getting the uh, playground area back behind there yes fixed up because there was a lot of people that said that they would like to have their kids out there play so we're going to see about fixing that up and getting that good for uh, for next season um, and then uh, we're going to look at some of the decking around it too that needs okay. to be fixed good and that's about it for me Teresa anything I really don't have anything but I would like to compliment and thank our police officers they did an extraordinary job during fair week we all got a list of the yeah. tickets yeah. and arrests that were made over Fair Week. And we think that we have really five full-time officers. They've done a really wonderful job. And I'd also like to say thank you to the Fair Board for helping us with the expense, but I would like it if they would help us more because it, it covers a small amount of what our cost is for the for Fair Week. So I would just like to put that out there so they think about it for their next meeting. <laughs> and that's all I have. I don't have anything. Okay, uh, under me for the mayor's report, I got a couple things. First thing I want to bring up, I think you all got a, a letter recently today about the varsity field hockey team. They're asking permission to once again to display signs for field hockey on Main Street. Thank you for your request and usually they take them down afterwards so we need a motion, motion. for that. Is, a motion. I just want to oh. ask, is there an adult there or are these all students? It looks like these are um, the students that are participating in the field hockey to me. Because usually we we work with or respond to whoever the we'll get a hold of the coach and we'll make sure Booster club or something. Yeah. yeah, each you know each of these teams has a coach or somebody who usually writes to us because if they don't take the signs down, we're not going to call on these kids. So All right. I'll talk to them. I'll get a hold of the coach. motion that we uh, do that, but after we. Get a hold of an adult coach or whoever okay. to, to and be. And then they take them down. Let, let them be yeah. the responsible party for it. Right. They take and them the down second. immediately after second. that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. All right. The next thing is uh, the uh, we had an issue with the Delaware Valley Hospital the water water bill. Yep. Uh, I think you've all been. What we do is we have all the accounts come in one check. There's five separate accounts. And what they did is one of the accounts, they didn't give the right amount of the check. So what the, 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 the clerk and deputy usually does is mail back the check and get one with the profit, which they were given time. But I guess it goes to Albany, it goes to Binghamton. By the time I got back here, it was five days late. They sent the letter asking to be excused the penalty. I went down and spoke to, I spoke to the CEO. I spoke to the president of the finance 
and the vice president of the finance and I explained to them that we cannot excuse all the penalties. However, I said, I'll speak to the board. The four accounts, the money actually was here in time, was that one account that was short, it was wrong, and that if the board agreed to that, we could adjust it where that one account would be hit with the fine. They're not getting any money back, I don't even know what they paid or anything, but that would be my suggestion. But again, that's up to the board, whatever the board wants to do. Is there anything unfair about that? No, I think it's very fair. I think Jody and Misty went way beyond what they normally do to try to accommodate them. Uh, like I said, I went to the, the CEO of the hospital and everything, and I, not only as the mayor, but as a member of the board, I expressed my displeasure in what they did in the letter that they wrote was inappropriate because they made the mistake, it wasn't us. And he admitted it and he said he would take care of it. So there's gonna be discipline on their end. But I thought that seeing how the, the other four accounts, the right amount did actually come on time. It was that one account that that would be a fair way of. Then I would think you're and I also explained to them that if the board did this, this would be the first and the only time that that would happen. Because if it came late again, there would be no excuses. Right, because we approaches. actually did not have access to that money, even though because yeah, right, they put yeah, it all in one right, check. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. It is our policy, if the amount doesn't cover the bills, that we cannot accept the payment. Right. That's with everybody. Right. So we sent back their checks and explained to them that it was insufficient. Right. Now we gave them a second due date. Right. Did they respond to us by that due date? No, it was like five days late. What would we do if, if that was a homeowner that didn't respond by the if, due if date? They, if they had the same thing like this, five different accounts, or one, one account? Well, we have landlords who have five different accounts. In one place? One, or I mean like? It's apples and oranges. Okay, apples and oranges. We sent okay. them okay. a right. deficiency. You could just say no. You didn't want to say no? We that told them that they needed to respond, and this right. was why, because right. of such and such. Okay. I mean, which is what we do with everybody. Right. And a lot of times, I'll give somebody one chance on certain things, and then they don't get no more. When did they reply? Did they reply late? We got their check back with the correct amount, um, and yes, it was late. We received it on the 13th of August. It was postmarked on the 9th. The I'm last sure day to pay fourth. was the 4th. When was the check written? I don't know if I can tell from here. On the 2nd. So then do they incur the late fees for between the days that... For, for that, that, one, that one account that was actually never had the right amount. That was my thought. I mean, technically we can, we can charge all the accounts as late. So what, what you're saying is since four of them were the correct amount, even the though it time. still came late right. because we have to send it no, back, no, we're the, doing them a favor. The original check was... The original check that came in was off the amount of one account that was wrong. Right. So the four accounts actually had the right amount here, but the check, the total check was wrong. But it we was didn't here, have it the was, check. It was here yeah, on we time. had the check. The it was here time. on time, but it was sent back. The original. Right. The original, the original check. check. The original, the original check, check had in. four accounts with the right money. Right. So what I'm saying is the village did not have access to that money because we had yes. to send it back because right. they sent the wrong yeah. amount. Okay. So technically, well, we couldn't, why, why wouldn't we <coughs> accept the check and say you still owe us money? Because that's not what the policy is. Policy is because that, that would, that would be putting everybody to a lot. Or every month that we did that, that, that happens quite Everybody's a lot. The only way they could make it different, I think, mm -hmm. is that the way you said is uh, if that they send a separate check for each right. account, and they don't, they send one a check. That's how the, that's how the business accounts. people in bank bank them send it out. Right. Okay. We haven't had a problem before with it. And hopefully we again. Well, I made it very clear <laughs> that they will not even be, if the board went along, it would not be accepted anymore. Right. That was just well, that, that's what I'm saying. It, I mean, technically, I think that they should be charged the late charge for all five accounts, but we're giving them a break by only charging them 
a late fee for the one account. The one yes. account that was 83 yes. something. Given, yes, I made it very so clear. So if they want to, if they want to be careful to not get, uh, I mean, because next time if this happens again, they're going to get charged a late fee for all five. Accounts. Yes, I told them. So I, was very I mean, clear they would be smart to do five checks. I told them that again. We've never had a problem before with them, right? Not to my knowledge. No. Okay. I've been here 12 years. So then I certainly would be willing to just give them the break and charge them for just the one account. Yeah, I think that's fair. Would you fair make that motion, somebody? I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. <sighs> tough one. Okay. Next one, number eight. Letter of support, Delaware Valley Hospital. <laughs> this is something that Delaware Valley Hospital is considered a critical access hospital because they have a limited number of seats that they can have, beds they can have, I don't mean seats, beds. So because they have a critical access uh, rating, they can purchase drugs for customers at a very, very reduced price, which all our patients that go there have it, can, can benefit from. Every so often, they have to renew for it, get the, it's called 130B, I think it's called 134B, I forgot what, 340B is the program. They have to send another application just to renew it, and they need a government agency to endorse them. We did it last time, and I would suggest that we do it again. It's not going to cost us anything, it's just saying that we, I have to sign it and, and send it in. Let me get motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Uh, number nine, the DASNY grant, $75,000 for equipment. You want to talk about Jody? Well, we applied for $100,000. Um, they're only going to offer us $75,000. Um, if you guys still want to proceed with the grant application, then we need a motion for the mayor to be able to sign this. I make that motion. Well, how much does what we want to purchase actually cost? $186,500. So we're going to, it's over $100,000. That we're picking up when we're doing that kind of thing? Yep, so it'll be $111,000. Yeah. $111,000. And that would be for um, a generator for DBW, because they don't have a generator for electricity. Two times. We've had some issues down there, they don't have a generator. Police department has one. They don't have it. They shouldn't even do it. They have all the water stuff down there. And the next thing is for a paver, right? A paver, it's called. Mm -hmm. They've been using something that's uh, 1940 uh, something paver that they jump on each time they go on it. It's a risk, but. And is that a hundred and whatever extra thousand dollars in the budget? Um, we're. It isn't currently, but this is like two years out. Okay. It would be something that would be down the road next year, the year after. You're guaranteed to 75. Yep. Yeah. So I need a motion if anyone wants Stephen to learn. Made the motion. Huh? Stephen made the motion. Did you make the motion? No, Stephen. Oh, Stephen. Stephen. I'm Just sorry. a little old me. Don't worry. Little old me. I need a second. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, uh, the next thing. We all got a letter from uh, Mr. Poss. It's too many butchers and stuff, yeah. What? Did yeah. Butch leave? The butch did leave. Yeah, he left. Yeah. Going back here? He probably had to get supper. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ladder that they put in. You saw all the, I'm thinking you all saw the bill on this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Passamano came in and saw me and he said that. When he sold that street to the village for one dollar back in, I don't know what year that was, but it was back in the 70s, that he was told he could do a 50-50 program uh, regarding anything he wants to do in that house, outside water or so. And, and, I, and I said to him, I believe the 50-50 program is still involved, and that's, that's regarding the sidewalk, which we still do. We have never done 50-50 when it comes to any kind of water installation. <clears throat> I said, however, please write a letter to the board. We'll talk about it, and uh, we'll see what they said. And he just stated, well, you know, I gave the village that whole street for a dollar. And I said, well, that was very kind of you, and thank you for that. But that, we have no, no records. The girls looked, there's no records going back. 
that would show anything like that. And I'm sure the record, it was 50-50 with Sidewalk, because that's been a policy for, Dave, you've been around for a long time on the board, right? Have you ever heard any other policy other than 50-50 like you know, that? The, the, of, of any sort, the sidewalk for the only thing we did 50-50 on. Yeah. And Dave's been around for 40 years, so I mean, who knows? What? Oh, 30, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dave's been around since then. Where's my cane? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm looking for whatever, any motions well, or I'm no motions. Look at what he signed. He already knew he was going to get a bill and he signed Yeah, he signed for it. He knew he was going to have to pay for it. He didn't even sign it. Just for the record. $1,398.88. And is there a date on that estimate? Yeah, it's uh, May 13th, 2017. Oh, okay. And this other one, he's Nothing talking about the 50-50 agreement. Was back, no, 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 uh, no. Back in 77, 79. Yeah. Were you born yet, Steve? Yes. Oh. I was in the eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So, is there any uh, any any motions to do anything, or uh, take no motion that they do nothing? Or what, what do you suggest? I mean, I, we don't need to take any action. I guess just let it go the way it is. I mean, okay, no action. No action. Let us go out saying that there's no action taken by the board. Right? Correct. Correct. Okay. I've been trying to move it on, it just takes a while. Now the only thing we got, we got to go, that'll be it for the meeting we need to go into executive session to talk about personnel. I'll make a motion to go to executive session. Second. All in favor? 